everybody. How's it going? Welcome to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. I want to thank you for joining me today. So the first thing you might notice about this vlog is I don't really have a voice. Um, I woke up like this this morning. I have no voice. I feel fine otherwise. I don't have a fever. I don't have body aches. Stomach feels fine. I can even breathe. But I woke up with a sore throat and no voice. Go figure. Just to give you a brief rundown on what we are doing today, and this shouldn't take very long, actually. That's why I still want to do it, because it shouldn't take all that long. It shouldn't even be that difficult, really. But I wanted to replace the cruise control controls in the Grand Am today, because I cannot stand not having cruise. So we're going to take care of that today, finally. Now, when I bought the Grand Am, we have buttons. But I noticed somebody at some point removed the actual switch. Or broke it. I don't know. So we have buttons. We have wires, but we do not have the actual switch. Why? I don't know. So the plan this morning is to go out to the junkyard, pull another switch off, and put it in this one, and hope that our cruise control actually works in this thing. Um, I mean, if not, it's no big deal, but the cruise is obviously nice to have. It's kind of hard keeping this car at a steady speed on the highway, especially around here. So. Um, the cruise around here is actually nice to have. To do this repair, we have to take the airbag off. Now, I'm telling you right now, because this is kind of in line with the videos, the video that I made of the do-it-yourself topic, you know, the tutorial thing. Yes, we are going to document what has to be done to remove the airbag and change out these controls but this is technically not a tutorial because this is the documenting of the repairs and upkeep and fixing up of this project this Grand Am if you are using this video as a tutorial to do this yourself be extremely careful with the airbag if you have no knowledge of airbag systems whatsoever do not attempt to do this repair we will be properly disarming the airbag system in the video and whatnot but just don't go on tearing this thing apart with power still attached you could set it off you can get hurt you can kill you uh, so yeah if you're using this as your own tutorial to do it yourself then take that into consideration if you have no knowledge or are nervous of even doing it do not do it do not do it so let's head out to the junkyard so I don't have to talk right now well, you know we got to look at some text while we're here may have already documented this one I don't know I still really miss mine you guys watched the one recent vlog, I talk about the possibility of getting another one soon. Not soon, soon, but in the future. This is an 05. Looks pretty basic. Manuals with it. Here's another one. This one's the exact same color as mine. Oh, what mine was. Minus this pinstripe here. Yeah, it's an 02, I thought so. Here's the 
fingers broke. <laughs> Ew. That's not good. C player. Man, these poor things. PCM's gone. Here's an 01. This one probably was documented before, but I think it was locked. But somebody got it open. Because I see the windows busted out over there on the other side. See? There's glass everywhere. This is so sad. Makes me really miss mine every time I see one of these in the shape that they're in. Really sad. What was this? O2. <sighs> Guys, take a look at this. It's a Grand Am GT. 93. Wow. Look at that color. It really doesn't look like it was in that bad of shape. Wow, and it's got a stick. Oh man, this looks a lot like the one my aunt had, her first Grand Am ever. It was also a 93, but it was an SE. But a lot of it looks the same. Not the stick though, that's, wow. 160,000 miles on it. It actually is really clean. Wow. Does uh, everything work? Yeah. water ice technically it's got ice in the trunk <laughs> this is amazing these are cup holders No manual. I have a 93 Grand Am manual, so it doesn't really matter to me, but... Wow. 
I like this color and the red. That's really cool. It says it's got the four cylinder in it. High output 16 valve four. Maybe there. Oh, heavy hood. Wow, it's clean under here too. Looks like nobody really picked at anything on this one yet. The quad four. Unbelievable. Uh, oil leak. Time and cover, I think. That's insane. Huh. All of the Grand Ams that I find with leather, they're all torn up. That door doesn't open, so I can't get to these cruise buttons. Wow, does this thing bring back some memories? There we go. And these buttons didn't seem to be that bad either. This one clicks. They don't stick. They're kind of dirty, but the other one was too. So I think these will be fine. I didn't even have to actually disconnect the airbag or horn or anything. I could probably on mine just carefully move it up like out of the way because this is the space we need. All right, let's go do this at home. All right, guys, we're home now. Um, so I got some food, so I'm going to go eat. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the fuse for the airbags. Um, even though I'm probably not actually going to disconnect the airbag once it's all out, uh, I am going to still pull the fuse since we are going to be moving it and you know who knows <coughs> who knows what could happen so the fuse for the airbag is in the driver's side fuse block and it is E if we can get to this because this is the door that doesn't want to open all the way <coughs> <laughs> well, that's going to be fun. I'm going to have to do it off camera. Um, I don't think it tells me... Well, this will. Hold on. Let's see. Okay, so it's the third 10 amp one down on the right hand side. <clears throat> and there's probably no fuse puller in there. No, so I'm going to have to get a fuse puller. All right, guys, game time. So, um, the overall process of this, as you kind of seen when we were still at the junkyard, really isn't that um, complicated. Um, it's it's actually even easier if you have the correct tools. So, the T30 is the size of the screws on the back side of the airbag hub. Um, so, the first thing that we need to do is take the top of the column shroud off. I hate these things because sometimes you never know if you're going to be able to get them back on right. I think, uh, yeah, so it's got some grooves on there. You probably could actually lower the steering wheel down. I don't have a lever, so i got to find the, there it is. There we go. <clears throat> that might make it a little easier. Um, and, uh, what I have to do now is remove the bezel around the gauge cluster. Um, if you have the correct size T30 for like a, a ratchet and uh, you know just long enough to go into the back side of the steering wheel, you probably don't have to remove this. But because of this being so long and this piece coming out, I had to remove it. So to do that, you need your Phillips screwdriver. I gotta change bits here. Hold on one second. Okay, so you need your Phillips screwdriver. There is uh, one screw there above the tack. It looks like it's been maybe taken off before from the 
looks of the screw. Yeah. So there's one there. There's one above the speedometer. And then down inside the column area there, there's two hex heads that we need to, oh, there's one hex head. <laughs> there should be two. That one's gone, so yeah, somebody's been back here. Probably when they did the ignition, whoever did the ignition switch before I bought the car. Um, so yeah, there should, there's a one there, and then there should be another one here, but it's gone. If I had known that, I would have just taken the one from the other car. Okay, so the screws at the bottom are sevens. In my case, one screw. This is seven. Try to wiggle it out of here somehow. Okay, once all of that's out, if you have to do that, now you can work on getting the airbag out. Um, so on the back side of the steering wheel, let me try to do this. I can't really see the screen all that well. There we go. Alright, so if you turn the wheel, there's a hole right there. And directly across on the other side of the wheel, there's the exact same hole. Um, we have to try to get the wheel up this way to try to get the uh, screwdriver or your socket or whatever you're using to get in there. In my case, I have to go through like this once I find the screw. And it takes a little while to get the tip of the Torx bit into the screw. Um, then I took my uh, channel, not channel locks, needle, not needle nose either, vice grips. <laughs> and I clamped them onto the end so I can get some force, you know, to turn. Um, doing a, having a ratchet would be so much easier, but I don't have one with a Torx bit this deep and this big. So I'm not going to be able to do this part with the camera in my hand, so I'm going to put the camera down and get this loosened up again. Oh, but seriously, save yourself the trouble. Use a socket <laughs> with a Torx 30 on it. All right, so at this point, uh, we got both those screws loose. Now we just take the airbag out. Remember, our fuse is pulled, so we should be okay. You still want to be careful. I also disconnected the horn relay because the um, uh, us pushing on this and stuff I didn't want the horn to constantly be going off so. okay that's right there and here's what we got with our cruise buttons so I don't understand how the buttons are still here the connector is still plugged in the actual little connector to the buttons are not plugged in so I don't know what the story behind that is hopefully the cruise control in this car does work because if I had to go through all this for nothing I will be a little disappointed <laughs> um, those buttons the Torx bit for that is a 10. A Torx 10. I actually grabbed the screws from the other um, set of buttons because I wasn't even sure if maybe all this was in here. But it looks like it is. So just these two buttons here. And uh, obviously, if you are replacing buttons that are completely intact, this will not be like that. It should look like this. Like the, oops, like the one we just purchased. So, pull this little thing out here. Make sure you don't use your airbag hub. This thing out. All right. 
<clears throat> now we put our new one in. New word one. Push that in. Push that little thing in there. Oh, the back of the steering wheel wants to move. I'm gonna need two hands. All right, there. So that's what that should look like. So these little tabs here slide over top of the opening. That'll line up your uh, screw holes. And then from there we can start driving these in. Once I locate the other one in the mess that I have on the seat beside me. There's a torque spec for these, 19 inch pounds. I think that's okay. All right, so now um, we have to put the, uh, these, we have to put these back on the airbag hub. We just screw these on, tighten them up, and then we can push them through the holes in the steering wheel to lock the airbag back in place. Okay, so they should look like that. When you're putting the airbag back in, make sure nothing is getting pinched. None of these wires are getting pinched. It helps if the steering wheel is completely straight, but you know, it keeps wanting to spring back. So once it's sitting in there, Uh, it's not working. The one side keeps locking in. Oh, is it locked? I think it's locked now. No. Oh. There we go. Hence, another reason why I unplugged the horn. Okay, there. That's better. So it's in. Okay. And now uh, we can put everything else together and see if this thing's gonna work out okay. All right, and amazingly enough, it looks like we didn't even really do anything, so I even got this to miraculously <laughs> get locked back into place. So here's our new buttons. Uh, like I said, this is seems to be in good shape now, now that we pounded it in there. So now we get to plug the fuse in for the airbag. Here's our 10 amp fuse for the airbag. Remember it's the third, it was the third one down on the right hand side out of all the red ones. Total of four red ones together. It was the third one. I'm trying to get out of the car. Fuses in. Now we gotta put the relay in for the horn, which is under the hood. I only really pulled this relay because I knew where it was, which was right here. So hopefully the horn doesn't go off. Cool. And the fuse puller that I found was in here. I gotta put it back over. But we'll just button this up for now. Let's try to turn the key over without the airbag going off. Okay, airbag light. Okay, airbag light is off. Horn still works. That lights up so there's power going to it. All right, let's go. All right, so before we do the highway thing, I'm going to try it here in town. Uh, you know, anything over 25, the crew should be able to be used. So I'll do like, I don't know, 27. I've already got the button turned on. Let's hit set. It 
It's working. Yay. Coast. It's coasting. Okay. And Excel. And brake. All right, cool. Our cruise works. Yes. I'm so glad. And hey, my voice is actually feeling a little bit better too. <laughs> All right, and that's going to be the end of today's shenanigans with the uh, Grand Am. Um, so we finally got our cruise working. I still wonder what the story was behind the actual uh, switches missing from the buttons. So, I don't know. I'll never find out. But I'm happy I could not stand uh, not having cruise for so long, especially if I take this car to school. It's all highway for the most part, and it's like a 45 minute drive, and trying to deal with the highway speeds and stuff without cruise for that long, it just kind of gets irritating. Even to work, I have to take the highway to work too, and um, even that's a little, you know, weird. I apologize if you guys were annoyed with the way I sound today. Um, I still have no idea what's going on. I feel fine, but um, I think it's whatever it is, it's... I, I'm sounding better, I think, um, as the day has been going on. Um, but I was planning on doing this today because, like I said, I couldn't take it. I probably didn't have to film it, but I also wanted to film it. So instead of waiting until my voice was better, I was like, we're just going to go ahead and do it regardless. Um, the window stuff is going to be next. Um, we have to fix the clips on the window regulator. That's why this tape on the window. Um this side of the window wants to fall down. This side is still hanging. Eventually, I'm sure that clip will give out too. So we have to replace the clips on the window regulator, which means we have to take the window out. Um, also in this door, I have to replace the window switch over here. Um, the door lock actuator. Have to hook up the trunk button because um, the trunk button was disconnected from the previous owner. And while we're at it, we have to take this door apart to find out why our speaker is not working in that door so we're just gonna have a whole video related to taking the door apart and fixing the things inside them hopefully that'll be soon but that's all I've got for today guys so I want to thank you for watching thank you for putting up with this irritating vocal situation if you did enjoy this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up comment and subscribe also check out teespring.com slash doors slash Mike's vehicle spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise and that's all that I've got for today. I'm going to do nothing else for the rest of the day. I lied. I do have some errands that I have to go do um, a little bit later. So I'll see you guys next time. Thank you again for watching. Take care.